Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us here on The Morning Show on E. Now that alcohol sales are back and we are officially in lockdown level one, drunk driving incidences are beginning to spike. In fact, uh, what are your rights in these situations? Uh, joining us live this morning via Skype is LegalWise's head of legal research, George Palser. Good morning, George. Welcome to The Morning Show. Morning, William. Thanks for having me again. Let's remind our viewers, George, what the consequences are for drunk driving. So I think that the most basic consequences we're all very familiar about is the criminal um, aspect around it. So the criminal charges. So when you're driving under the influence of alcohol and, and your blood alcohol limit exceeds that of the what's prescribed in the law, you will be charged with, with a criminal offense. Um, but if you, your driving under the influence of alcohol actually leads to something else, for example, a, an accident, then you, there's other criminal offenses that you can be charged with. For example, reckless or negligent driving, or if your accident then caused the death of someone else, you might be charged with culpable homicide, for example. So that's some of the criminal offenses that you can face for driving under the influence of alcohol. But you also, and we'll get to this in a little bit now, but there's the other aspect as well. If you cause an accident, you can be held liable for the damages of the other vehicle or of the other person. Um, just something interesting before we get to the next question is there's a new bill that um, was proposed which, which, which suggests that the alcohol limit be reduced to zero. So currently there is still a little bit of a leeway for responsible drinking and driving um, due to the alcohol limit. But if that bill then should become law one day, it means that as soon as you consume any amount of alcohol, you are not allowed to drive a vehicle. Um, interesting to keep that in the back of our minds as we see how it progresses to see how it will impact um, the road traffic laws in that instance then. Especially because South Africa does have one of the most alarming numbers of car accidents around exactly. Easter time and the festive season. So George, as you've mentioned, motor vehicle accident, uh, accidents and with the alcohol bans amended as we have started under lockdown level one, does drunk driving then, George, have an impact on the liability of the driver? For example, just because the driver is drunk, is it automatically their fault? With, with these instances, you'll have to look at the circumstances. So as we all know, general principles in this instance would require, would, would state that the person who caused the accident will be liable for the damages. So how we establish that, and just to get to the basics quickly, is we'll look at how the accident was caused. Was it deliberate? Did someone on purpose bump into your car? Or was it by negligence? And the test for negligence is, and I'm sure everybody's heard this before, that the reasonable person test. So you're looking at the reasonable person. Would a reasonable person have foreseen that the accident would have happened? And would the reasonable person have taken actions to prevent that accident from happening and the damages from occurring. So when we look and we, we pull it back to and driving under the influence of alcohol, as you mentioned, driving under the influence is one of the leading causes for motor vehicle accidents. So a reasonable person would have foreseen that me being drunk, getting into a car driving might lead to an accident. So I should have taken the precautions of not getting in that car and driving. So it all depends on that and, and also the of, of what actions happened. What were your actions of that person driving under the influence of alcohol? Let's talk about that, George. I mean, what if uh, you were driving under the influence, but you were not the cause of the accident? I mean, will that impact your claim for damages? So when you, as if we take that question on the other side, if you were not the cause of the accident, technically you, you are not supposed to be liable for the damages. Yeah. So let's say, for example, you're standing at a red stop sign or, or a red robot and somebody bumps into you from behind. The fact that you are under the influence of alcohol would not necessarily have that impact on the accident because someone bumped into you. However, you have to look at the facts as well. And, and, and then you can say that would a reasonable person have foreseen that that person coming from behind would come and bump into you and maybe take some action to try and prevent that accident from happening? And then the fact that you are under the influence of alcohol might then have added or contributed to the accident happening. So if that is the case, then it will impact your claim for damages. Because if you contributed or had any um, 
contributing factor towards that accident, it can limit your claim for damages because they will take some calculations into account and say that because of you being party liable for the accident or causing the accident, you must also be liable for some of the damages that you suffered. So it can have an impact. Uh, will it also impact your insurance claim, George? So that depends on your insurance policy. And some of insurance policies will have a clause that say that if you are driving under the, you were driving under the influence when your damages occurred and you want to claim from your insurance policy, that that claim will not be covered. Um, or it might even go as far as to say that we might cover it, but your excess fee will be um, you know, a very high amount. So it can have an impact in that instance as well. And meaning then that you will have to be personally liable for your own damages as well as the damages from for the third party if the insurance does not cover it. Okay, uh, let's wrap up our conversation this morning, George, and just talk about the consequences uh, if you drive with a company car. What happens then? So in that instance, we're looking at something that's called vicarious li liability. So if you are driving with a company car um, during the course of business um, and you cause an accident, that person can claim from you or your employer through vicarious li liability or both. Um, however, if you are driving under the influence of alcohol during your course of um, business and you cause an accident, that might have some more severe consequences for you as well because it might lead to disciplinary steps at, the, at your employer, which might lead to your dismissal, um, as well as instances where you might be personally liable for the damages in that instance as well. So having with, with driving under the influence, there's a lot of factors that must be taken into account and a lot of consequences. Unfortunately, it's never in your favor. It will always count against you. George, are we still a long way away from that zero uh, percent alcohol limit? Is it like five so months away, I, two years away? Do we have a timeline? I'm unfortunately not able to give a timeline on that. Um, as far as I know, it just the bill has been presented. Um, so I think there's still a while to go uh, before that has been finalized, if it will be finalized. It hasn't been made a law yet. So I'm, I'm not sure how long it will take. Great. I think it will come in ideally for South Africa. Uh, and it will go a long way in reducing the number of accidents we have uh, just right here in our borders. Thank you so much, George Pulse, chatting to us this morning via Skype. He is the head of legal research at LegalWise. Remember, you can SMS the word JOIN to 41295 if you haven't already, and they will call you right back.